Welcome to the fourth and final episode in a Legendarium series about ancient Iberia. In part four, Carthage Conquers, we will talk about how the Barkid family transformed southern Iberia into their personal fiefdom. For three centuries, Carthage kept its attention on trade in the Iberian Peninsula. That changed during the year 241 BC when Carthage suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of Rome. Carthage lost the rich island of Sicily on the toe of the Italian boot. This deprived them of a central nexus for controlling Mediterranean trade along with the island's vast agricultural wealth. Rome also seized the islands of Corsica and Sardinia from their African rival. Even worse, Rome forced Carthage to pay financial compensation for the late war, which had raged for 24 years. After these setbacks, a spirit of angry revanchism took hold among Carthage's ruling class. To restore Carthaginian power, they turned to one of their few commanders to emerge from the war with an unscathed reputation. Accompanied by his son-in-law Hasdrubal the Resplendent and his nine-year-old son Hannibal, Hamilcar Barca landed at Gadir, modern-day Cadiz, in 237 BC. He supplemented his original force from Africa with 25,000 Iberian auxiliaries and built an army 50,000 strong. It included a core of Numidian cavalry and 100 war elephants. In Hamilcar Barca's army, any ambitious officer sought out a post as a war elephant commander. A phalanx commander might assume responsibility for as many as 64 pachyderms. They also handled the vast amounts of fodder needed to feed them, often carried by the great beasts themselves. War elephants bore a driver and three archers, sometimes protected by strap-on towers. The animal itself wore an armor breastplate, metal spikes on its tusks for more efficient goring, and colorful headpieces that terrified the enemy. Before battle, commanders fed the animals vast amounts of wine. However, should they go into an uncontrollable rage and endanger the Carthaginian army, the driver carried a spiked hammer to bash the unfortunate and maddened animal's skull in. Hamilcar Barca simmered with resentment not only for Rome, but the Carthaginian ruling class which he viewed as lacking the will for victory. According to a beloved legend, the battle-scarred Hamilcar took his nine-year-old son Hannibal to a shrine. There Hamilcar ordered him to swear an oath, never be a friend to Rome. The young Hannibal would devote much of his adult life to realizing this pledge to his father. But for the time being, the Barkid family devoted itself to war in Iberia. This was a drastic change for Carthage, which long relied on sea power to secure wealth. If they required muscle, they used their riches to recruit allies among local chieftains. In less than a year, centuries of commercial exchange became military occupation as Hamilcar ruthlessly subjugated coastal and inland towns. He turned his attention towards the silver mines in Iberia. For Carthaginians and Iberians alike, silver served as a status symbol and the basis of wealth. For Hamilcar, it served as the means to pay his armies. Iberians on the losing side of his wars found themselves rounded up and forced underground. There they chased silver veins through rock walls, going up or down. Because it would be hard to swing long tools in snaking tunnels, laborers used tiny picks about one foot long to chip away at solid stone. As they chipped away at the rock, stone dust entered their noses and eyes. Anyone who survived for a few years likely went blind. During the winter, it grew so cold that men developed frostbite. Dozens of men and boys crammed together during the summer made the tunnels swelteringly hot. 
Naked flames from candles and lamps provided their only light in the pitch blackness underground, yet that fire could also ignite fumes coming up from the earth, creating thunderous explosions that could slaughter many in a moment. Laborers paid a heavy toll in blood and tears for Iberian silver, which paid soldiers and mercenaries who served the Barkid family. Hamilcar effectively turned southern Iberia into his family's personal fiefdom, only nominally loyal to Carthage. Though the ruling class back home viewed this with suspicion, the Carthaginian public celebrated the Barca family's conquests as restoring Carthaginian greatness. Yet for all that, Hamilcar's ambitions ended during the winter of 229 and 228 BC. That year, he led his army into the frosty teeth of winter to besiege the city of Helice. Unfortunately for him, his Iberian allies betrayed him. While trying to flee across a river, Hamilcar drowned. His son-in-law, Hasdrubal the Resplendent, promptly took over and founded a new capital at Cartago Nova, modern-day Cartagena. Soon after, he began expanding inland and attracted new migrants to Cartago Nova, which became home to 30 thousand Africans. These transformations alarmed the Romans. Hamilcar replied by insisting that he needed Iberian silver to pay war indemnities to Rome. Thus, Rome made a treaty with Hasdrubal in 226 BC, limiting Carthage to the south bank of the river Ebro. Hannibal spent these years cultivating his contacts with the Padane Gauls of the Po Valley in northern Italy. They made agreements about the distribution of food, money, and even hospitality for a time when Carthage marched against Rome. All the while, Hannibal sent scouts to search out the best possible path through the Alps, and to tend to his Iberian home, he married an Iberian woman named Himalise. Around 221 BC, Hasdrubal the Resplendent died at the hands of a Celtic mercenary. It remains unknown if Rome or if his brother-in-law Hannibal filled the mercenary's pockets. In any case, Hannibal took command of the Barkid forces by 220 BC at the age of 26, and Iberia would become Hannibal's base for his war against Rome. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.